Hey, welcome back. Please subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed. Otherwise, let's continue. So in this one, we're looking at magic methods. So like I said in the previous uh, video, the construct uh, the constructor here is actually a magic method with two underscores at the beginning. So as you can see, there's a whole list here of magic methods. So we've looked at construct and destruct, and there are a few here like call, call static, get, set, is set, unset, wake up, serialize, and so on. So we're going to look at the important ones here. We'll go through all of them, of course, but uh, we'll look at the important ones in detail. So here, what I want us to look at for now is the get and the set. So these are known as getters and setters. Mm -hmm. So let's look at what this is all about. So let me come back to, so to get to this page, of course, just uh, Google PHP magic methods and choose the one with uh, php.net and you get to this page right here. Alrighty then. So let's come back to our project here for a second and let's see how we can uh, Let's see how we can uh, display that functionality there. So let's imagine for a second. So forget about the constructor for a minute here. Let me just add some uh, items here. Uh, host name, I'm just going to add local host there. I just need some values in there. Then DB name, I'm just going to say uh, my DB, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to instantiate here and just once. That should be enough. And I will remove this echo created here so that it doesn't, uh, don't mind all this here. This is all uh, not required. Let me just remove it. Actually, we, we don't need all that. So if I come back to my page here, I get nothing, of course. So the set or uh, the set function is evoked when you want when you're trying to set a property that does not exist so remember that these here are the properties right but what i can do down here because you see there's no property uh called name for example so what i can do is i can set it here directly like this i can say uh, db name is equal to some name something like this okay so it's possible to just do this and it's going to add this property to this list here and i can prove that by reading from it eventually i can say db name i can tell it to echo it so i'll say echo db name like this okay so if I come back here and refresh the page, you see that some name actually comes up there without an error. But if I remove this part here and just try to echo it without setting it, then I will have a problem because now if I, it's going to say undefined uh, property DB database. So here it tells you what class name it is and what property it is so you can see it's showing you the static version of uh, retrieving this uh, property that we're trying to retrieve but it's saying undefined because it can't find it now if I try to read one that exists already so let's say DB name something like this you see that you know I won't get this error I'll just get the value right there because why it's actually set so you can set it immediately on the data on the class like this or you can set it later on you can set properties in this manner like this but now there are some times that you want uh, you want to take control of this situation you don't want people to just uh, define properties that uh, do not exist here you want to stop that kind of behavior maybe or maybe you want to uh, regulate what happens when somebody tries to access or tries to set 
a property that doesn't exist. This is where the magic method set comes in. Now, keep in mind that all magic methods, except the constructor and destructor, if I'm not mistaken, I think those two, except those two, the rest must be public functions. So you cannot say private function for a magic method, like uh, what method is that? Set, something like this. this is going to throw an error. So we will say function double underscore set like this. So this one is called a setter because it actually sets values on your behalf. So because we didn't put any uh, accessor here at the beginning, so it assumes that it's public by default, but you can specify like that. So public function set. So this one set is called every time we try to access, uh, we try to set a value that does not exist, a property that doesn't exist. So here, I just want you to see when it is echoed. So I'll say echo uh, setting, something like this, okay? So that we know when this function actually runs. So here, I will uh, remove name here. So we are not setting this at all. We're just trying to read from DB name, which exists here, okay? So if I refresh here, Oh, it takes two arguments. So you see, this is what happens when you don't give it some arguments in there. So it's telling me that uh, the method set must take at least, exactly, not at least, but exactly two arguments. So set requires two arguments here. Now the reason it does is because set is evoked when you do something like this, okay? So you see this here, db name is equal to some value. So here I'm providing the property name and I'm also providing a value that I want to set that to. So you must declare those two here. You must declare the uh, name of the property, comma, the value like this. So this is required. Now, the important thing to note is that you don't have to name them like this. You can give them any name you want, but just know that the first one is the name and the second one is the value. So I can say name two or value two, it's still going to work. It won't give me an error like that. Okay, so let's just prove that and do this. Mm -hmm. So you see no errors there whatsoever. But if you notice, because I'm trying to echo db, db name here, you don't see this word setting because db name actually exists as a property, right? So if I do that, it just shows me the value that I'm looking for. If I'm looking for the host name, I will see exactly the same thing. So if I do host name, refresh, and then it will give me the host name that is here. But now if I try to access something that does not exist, which is just like DB name there, then I'm going to get an error. So it will say undefined property DB name. So in this case, this is when the uh, oh, actually not, not reading here. This is for setting. So my bad here, let me do this. Instead, let me try to set something here. So for example, I want to set DB name to some other item. So DB name, refresh. Okay, so it, it has worked without a problem here. Okay, so you don't see this echo setting here. I have changed DB name to some name here successfully. But if I try to change just name like that, I try to set name, which does not exist here. I'm trying to set it to this, this time, and I will refresh. You see setting there, okay? Now keep in mind um, whether this function exists or not, I will not get an error when I try to do this. So it's acceptable to set a new property without even having this function there. So I can set a new property anytime I want and this function is not required. Whether this function is there or not is irrelevant. But if the function is there and I try to set one that, that does not exist, the whole process will first pass through the, the set and then it will not actually, let's try and echo out db name for, for a sec. So we are setting it and then let's try to echo it out like this. So as you can see, it just goes to the function 
and then it doesn't actually set it. So if you look closely here, if this function did not exist, it would set this value. I won't get this error. Just look at this. It, it was actually set successfully. So it set and then it read from it. But if I add the function now, it is forced to go through this magic method and just execute the code that is here and it will forget about actually setting the property if it did not already exist. But if the property existed already, it's just going to change its value and it won't pass through here. So I hope that is uh, making sense so far. So now that we are, have this function, it means things will go through here and not actually be set. So what can we do? So here we can put some logic, for example, to decide whether we want to actually set this item or not, or just ignore it. So this is entirely up to you. So at this point, I can tell it to set it for me. So now I know that I have the name and I have the value. So I have the name of the property and I have the value like this. Okay. So now what I can do is to set it from here. So I can just say uh, this like this name. Now, remember that when we are saying this and we're trying to access a value like host name, we don't put this dollar sign there. If you remember very well, we just put the actual name there. Now, the thing is this variable here contains this string here. Okay. It contains this string. So it's as good as I have put this string directly here without the dollar sign, because this is a variable that contains a value. So this is the same as doing something like, uh, I hope I will not confuse you some more here. If I say a is equal to um, some variable, let's say variable name. I will just say variable like this. Okay. And then I can do something like this is equal to one. This is valid PHP because what I'm actually saying is I'm creating a variable named variable. And then I am, uh, I am setting it to one. So here, just for a second, bear with me here. If I close this and open it there. Okay. So like this. So all this up here is ignored except this. So this is valid PHP because I'm saying, I'm telling it that A is equal to this string right here. And then this string, which is variable is this part. So just imagine, think of it as this part is this text, this part, it's this text. And then it's got a dollar sign, meaning that I've created a variable named variable. So if at this point I say echo like this variable, like that, it's going to echo one. So let me come back here and refresh. And you see there's one there, even though it looks like I didn't set this variable, but I did because I just set it in a different way. And this is how you use this double dollar sign. Like uh, uh, it's called a variable variable or a dynamic variable like this. So in the same way, this is what we are doing here. We are setting the property here dynamically. So the property we are setting is not named name, but it's named whatever the variable that was brought in here will be. Okay. So hopefully that has made sense as well. Let me come back here at the top like this. So this is, uh, let's give it a different name so that it's not named name name like this, just so we can uh, see it in action. So here I can say maybe password like this because we are naming uh, these for our database. So host name, DB name, and then password. Okay. So we'll say some password here, something like that. Okay. And then now if I try to echo here, I will echo it like that. I should be able to find it. So here I'm going to say this name. So in this case, name is equal to password then I'm going to say is equal to value, whatever value was supplied by the user. So here, what I'm doing is I'm redirecting this uh, procedure into this function and then doing exactly what it should have done by itself. Now you may think this is a waste of time, but it isn't because you get to choose you. 
you get to do something before it's actually set because you can decide. Sometimes you may say, I don't want the password to be set. Then you can ignore it here. You can say, if it's equal to password, then don't set it. Otherwise, set it. So it gives you an opportunity to choose what is set and what is not or what else to do. Or maybe it wants, uh, if you don't want any new variables to be set, you can just echo an error right here. For example, you can say, uh, okay, before we go to that, just look at, uh, to show that this is actually working, we're actually setting the thing, it's going to echo some password here. So if I refresh, you see some password, it's actually working. If I remove that, it will cause an error. You see, undefined property password because I actually didn't set it. Okay, but if you want, you can just echo and say echo. Uh, adding new properties not allowed, something like this. Okay, so at that point, if I do this, then it will show me that error like adding new properties not allowed. Okay, so this is what a setter is. You can use it to set some properties. If you want, you can even run functions in here. So you can have another function down here, which you may want to run that will do some other things before you set, you decide whether to set that item or not. So this is what a setter does. So next, we're going to look at a getter. That one is more interesting than the setter.